Hello everybody and welcome back to our Road to Med School Junior Edition. Today we are talking all about what to do during your junior year, things that you can do to prep, plan, get a slight advantage, start with one foot forward, hit the ground running, insert whatever anecdote, metaphor, or simile that you want. We're gonna be talking about some of those important things to hit today. As always, my name is Hunter. Hello, welcome. I'm a Blueprint MCAT instructor and tutor, and it's a pleasure to hang out with y'all again. Hopefully you've been watching our freshman and in a sophomore series. Those can be here or here or here or here. Check out our other videos. And if you're just kind of chronologically walking right after freshman year, after your sophomore year, we're talking juniors. Now we're gonna go over a handful of things, really what you should be focusing on, what are some of the things that you can do to get ahead, some 100% must haves, but we're also gonna do a slight kind of comparison of what you should be doing as a junior if you're planning on applying and testing and doing all that stuff as a junior and as a senior and getting into the med school right after you graduate. That is the quote unquote traditional path, but more and more, it is becoming the non-traditional path. Well, the non-traditional path is becoming more and more popular. Let's say it that way. And the non-traditional path will also kind of compare what you should be doing if you're a current junior, but you know that you're gonna take a gap year. Gap years are becoming more and more popular. The stigma around them is disappearing, which it should, right? A lot of med schools are respecting that decision. The average age of matriculation is increasing and has been for a long time. Kind of what I was alluding to earlier. First and foremost, let's dive into it. You are a junior, you are third year in college. It's not your freshman year anymore. Freshman year, everything was new and exciting and shiny and kind of scary, but you were into it, right? Sophomore year, you're kind of getting a hang of things, right? You got one year under your belt. You're not the new blood on campus anymore. You've got your classes. You know where the buildings are. We talked about in our previous videos that what you should be doing in those years, right? Freshman year, it's a lot of GPA focus on your schools, but sophomore year, it's a lot of kind of activities getting involved. If you are a junior, then the fulcrum has tilted. You're not in the first half of your career your career. As a junior, you are now more than halfway done with your undergraduate academic career. Kind of scary stuff. This is where things get a little bit more serious. We're starting to think about careers. Remember the whole reason why we went to college in the first place? First and foremost, let's kind of dive into how important is the junior year in the grand scheme of things, right? It's pretty important. <laughs> things are getting a little bit more serious, right? By this time in your academic career, you should already be well involved in a bunch of activities. That's what we talked about in our sophomore video. A lot of activities, trying to get your out there. Really, you're just building your resume. The plus side is that maybe some of your activities are fun and you actually really care about them. That's awesome. But really like a lot of this is kind of resume building. So you should already have a pretty solid academic foundation, right? So that's where we're kind of standing at. And your junior year, you want to continue those trends while still adding more to it and kind of getting more into the professional side. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means. So what are some things that you should have hundred percent finished by the time you are a junior? Well, some of those more passive activities that we've already talked about shadowing, things along those lines, like you can do tutor stuff for your undergraduate, like all that kind of looks good. Any kind of volunteer work, heck yes. But now is where we want to, if you haven't already, pivot towards focusing on research and clinical. Those are the two things that you must have done by your junior year. It'd be great if you started it your sophomore year, but if that's not the case, you're just now getting onto it, hey, better late than never, right? Now you want to be involved in active clinical activities. What are those? Scribing, clinical internships, there's like Cope Health Scholars, there's a whole bunch of those, EMT, medical assistant, anything along those lines. You should be doing something that's more active and engaged in the field as opposed to just like passively shadowing and watching. And you should also be able to consistently demonstrate that you are eager to help, that you're anxious to do it, that you are ready and willing to apply your solid foundation of like, I'm a great individual, I'm a hard worker, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Apply that to the work that you're doing so that when you ask these people for letters of rec, they have glowing things to say about you, right? So that's kind of the plan. Try to look for any kind of research opportunity whether you're like doing an internship or anything like that, clinical stuff, anything that has to do with patients and you're in a hospital or in a medical setting and you're working with medical professionals, that looks awesome, right? A lot of juniors force a square peg into a round hole and they are just trying to go like, well, I have to do this, right? Junior year is like the year. It's when you're taking your MCAT. It's when you're applying to medical school and then you're gonna wrap up your senior year and then you're gonna go right to medical school because you've been accepted, et cetera, et cetera. And while that is like the traditional ideal, that's great. I will say a mistake I see a lot of students making is like they are forcing themselves into that timeline. Take the MCAT when you're ready for it. If you're not ready, if your application isn't ready, if you had a good time
time in college if maybe your academic GPA isn't where it should be. Maybe your activities aren't where it should be. Maybe you focused a little too much on one aspect and not the other. Maybe we went Greek and we really enjoyed going Greek, but because we did that, we don't have those clinicals or those research opportunities. That is a huge piece of advice that not only myself, but our Blueprint admissions advisors tell students all the time is apply when you're ready. Don't force yourself into the traditional timeline. It is more than okay to take a gap year. It is more than okay to go back and work on some of those extracurriculars and those activities that you didn't get a chance to work on up until this point. Make sure that you have a solid application before you just dive in and start applying. Not only do schools see every time that you reapply and they might ask you if you get an interview, hey, how come you're applying a second, third, fourth time? But it's also, it's expensive, yo. It costs a lot of money to apply to med schools. Just to apply to medical schools costs money, right? So if you are planning on applying as a junior or a senior, you're, long story short, you're trying to get into school immediately after you graduate from your undergrad. Your academics at this point should already be super strong. You should be a very competitive GPA. If you've already got two years under your belt as a junior or you're an incoming senior, you've got three years under your belt, you should know roughly what your GPA is gonna look like. Averages are average, so it's not gonna be a huge surprise. That's gonna kind of continue the trend. So your academics should be super strong. That being said, if you're planning on taking a gap year, it's built into the name. It is a gap year. You have extra time built in to maybe work on those academics. A lot of students decide to go back for a post back. They go back for a couple classes. They retake some stuff. I've had some students who absolutely had the credits to graduate, but then they just like chose not to graduate. They did a super senior year. They took a fifth year in school in order to retake some classes. Like there's a whole bunch of different things you can do. There's a whole bunch of special programs that you can attend. So gap years give you a little bit of buffer time to work on those academics and that GPA if you need it. If you don't need it, that's awesome. As far as the MCAT goes, if you are a junior or senior and you are applying to med school while you're still an undergraduate, you need to be very, very meticulous. You need to be very careful with the way that you plan your MCAT prep because you are going to have a very busy school schedule and MCAT prep takes a big chunk of time. It's basically like a full-time job. You need to figure out how to put it in there. Plan out exactly when you are going to start studying, how long that study period is going to take, usually four to six months-ish, exactly when you plan on taking your MCAT. You wanna take it early enough in the year so that if you don't like your score, you can retake it and you can still submit your application around like the May, June time. You don't wanna to wait to submit your application until October. That is way too late. If you're planning on taking a gap year, got a little bit of extra time. You can breathe, it's an extra year. But if you are planning on applying and you're taking a gap year, how does your MCAT prep look like? Again, you've got a little bit more time. You can focus on your GPA as a junior, right? If you're a junior and you know, I'm going to take a gap year, I'm not gonna apply immediately, et cetera, et cetera. If you're already planning on going that route, then 100%, don't worry about the MCAT now. Just focus on your GPA and your academics. You should strengthen the rest of your application. You are going to have to take the MCAT before you apply, but that exam can be taken later. So worry about the things that are most pressing and relevant in front of you at the time, GPA. Right, so that's kind of the plan. As far as community service goes, you should definitely, if you haven't already, be involved in some sort of community service activity. Long story short, you should be passionate about what you're doing and now's the time to demonstrate that you are involved in your community and that you are ready and willing to give back because that's what med schools are looking for. That's what they want in future doctors. That is really junior year in a nutshell. It is switching gears to more serious activities that are active and engaged, that are clinical and related to the medical field. Focus on your MCAT if you're planning on applying while you're still in your undergraduate. If you're taking a gap year, you've got a little bit more time and a little bit more flexibility on your MCAT prep, but don't slack off. The MCAT is a beast, let me tell you what. And then make sure that you're doing all these kind of like altruistic things. You're really getting the holistic aspect of your application ready to go. That way you're not a senior sitting there with a great MCAT score, a great GPA going, oh man, I have nothing else on my application. I'm just a couple numbers and there's no substance here, right? P.S. Having great community service and stories there also makes your personal statement really interesting to read too. So, that's about all I have to say. That is it for Hunter's Helpful Hints. Look at that alliteration. Hopefully y'all have found this slightly helpful. Hopefully if you are a junior, you can sit here and nod along and go, yep, 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 Hunter, I'm doing all these things. Heck yes. If you are a incoming senior watching this and there's a few things on this list that you didn't touch previously in your academic career, maybe we got some work to do, right? So that's it for me. I'm going to stop talking. Thank y'all so much for watching. Please hang out with Blueprint Prep. We're gonna have a whole bunch more videos on the channel. Go ahead and subscribe, smash that notification, click the bell, do all that other stuff. Thank you so much. And don't forget to check out Blueprint Prep. We've got fantastic tutors like me. We also have fantastic admissions consultant people. They know what they're talking about. So yeah, hang out with us. And with that being said, I hope to see you next year. 
for the senior road to med school? I mean, we're not gonna wait a year to post the video, but you know, if you're waiting a year to watch it, you get what I'm saying. All right, everybody, thank you so much. This has been super fun hanging out with you. Have a good rest of your prep. Yeah, good luck prepping. You guys got this. Take care.